welcome to the session today thanks for joining today we are going to talk about the st1 evolution uh, my name is somarajan i am working in the networking industry for more than 20 plus years in various networking technologies as well as a network automation product as part of my work in cisco before we discussing more about uh, st1 first we want to talk about the evolution of the one network itself uh, initially um, i started working on the one network in late 90s where uh, mostly the one network was uh, was built using frame relay uh, uh, and and hcm later on uh, mostly the topology built uh, at that time was uh, Uh, hub and spoke between branch and central office and between regional and central office full mesh to establish and the traffic pattern itself is pretty much uh, the same where the all the branches talk to the central office for any accessing any application and the customer from internet connected to the uh, to the central office for anything like a web uh, for um, accessing the application or anything from the uh, the central office So then comes the next uh, revision of the, um, uh, the technology where uh, late 90s uh, uh, Cisco come up with the MPLS. The first version of the MPLS was built on top of the HEM. They are called IP plus HEM. So uh, there, uh, it evolved was the first application from MPLS, which is the MPLS VPN, used for uh, branch and uh, connective branch connectivity. So MPLS VPN. uh have the top, can build a topology of uh, hub and spoke full mesh and partial mesh that is pretty much was in align with what was uh, um uh, what was deployed everywhere and then most of the traditional frame relay hcm are replaced with mpls vpn uh, uh topologies and the traffic pattern was pretty much the same uh going to the branches to the central office and uh, between the central offices and internet was just a browsing are uh, usually for browsing so the majority of the traffic was uh, uh, issues traffic and then very minimum traffic to the internet uh, uh, for browsing purpose the next uh, evolution of uh, 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 evolution came uh, with the uh, mid 2000 where uh, initially the public cloud came into existence as well as a lot of uh, applications start coming evolving on the internet uh, as saas application that changed the traffic pattern of uh, traditional traffic pattern of uh, majority of the traffic being uh, being in the on east west direction uh, change it to uh, more tra- more and more traffic is uh, uh, north south traffic so that's where i think uh the st1 started evolving in uh, uh late uh, 2000 time frame so the, uh, if you look at the summarizing that there are three major drivers one the number one is uh, the change of the traffic uh, pattern uh so more and more traffic is uh, uh towards the branch directly to the internet and also every tra- every packet traditionally every packet which is going to the internet shear uh, towards the uh, data center and from there to the central office and from there it, it taken to the uh internet which so, so it it overhead addition overhead and the third thing is uh, internet required internet application saas and public cloud required uh key, you know quality of service for the service that it will required more handling application performance handling uh for the transporting the packets so these three things are the major reason why um the st1 evolved in late 2000s okay let's go through this um st1 evolution stages right so here i listed the uh, five stages so we will go through each of them in detail the one which first is the one optimization so early 2000 where we have uh, um the van optimization technique evolved because of the delays in it to cancel um delay sensitive one packet low sensitive application to make sure they are prioritized first on to uh, to ensure the application is performed well over the one network and then come to the next stage where we have hybrid one where we have two circuit from the branch or central office one circuit regular mpls circuit and the other circuit is a um regular internet uh, uh, which she use for uh, 
non delay sensitive uh, traffic and there is a policy which uh, uh, forward the traffic based on the pra- uh, based on the application performance uh, requirement uh, in uh, cisco is called i1 uh, that is the uh, i intelligent one uh, uh, came prior to this st1 which was uh, um, using this uh, hybrid approach then come to the st fully evolved st1 where we have a Uh, central plane and data plane separated with the fully automation and orchestration so this is where i think uh, the full um, uh, in later of uh, 2000 uh, later 2000 have, uh, time frame then come to the cloud um, evol- evolution of cloud uh, uh, an acceleration of um, saas application um, uh, next version of uh, st1 evolution where we have all the cloud application as well as uh, also the deployment of the st1 itself in, uh, in a cloud infrastructure is done uh, this is where i think we have it's called cloud native st1 and and then then come to the final state where we have the uh, secure access service edge where we have both uh, um, uh, both uh, um, the networking as well as uh, the security policy integrated together to ensure um, or any devices remote user as well as the applications or authenticated and access and traffic flows are fully secure to ensure that both networking as well as uh, uh, security is integrated together to uh, to support the evolving zero trust uh, security approach uh, this is where uh, um, all the vendors are building their roadmap or they are in the middle of building or they have already have one a couple of component uh to uh, their exist today as uh, you know sasi solution hope you understood uh, the evolution let's talk about the one optimization as we saw in the evolution of st1 one optimization was the earliest phase in uh, st1 evolution where uh, the the uh, the one traffic was created separately and compressed and also you know produce the latency using different uh, different uh, uh, techniques it's called one optimization techniques and these tradition was typically uh, deployed uh, the traffic over the one specifically it was prior, more prioritization was done for the application which is delay or uh, sensitive like a uh, voice and real time voice and day, uh, and data and also um the low priority traffic is treated you know differently uh, to make sure that you know they got the required uh, uh, quality for the application into the application just talk about the hybrid van so this is where i think after the one optimization we have entered a phase where we have uh, you know this is a, it's an you know i1 is on an example early phase of cisco i1 is an example where um we have the Uh, uh, the two link from the branch to the central office uh, there are uh, or, or the other connection as well there are two link uh, one the prime uh, the uh, the link which uh, carry the mission critical applications which is over uh, an mpls link and uh, all other regular traffic which will go through a uh, internet regular internet uh, connection so this uh, give uh, a, a, a way to you know optimize the cost as well as what is you know it has become more um uh, it help to move towards the st1 technology because it is a use underneath it use a policy based uh, uh, based on the policy the, the application will be routed through the mpls link or to the internet link right so this will actually help in uh, just bringing you know migrating to the st1 technology later on with the uh, with the separating the control plane and data plane so this was the evolution, evolution towards the so the st1 fully um, separated the data plane control and plane driven st1 let deep dive into st1 so um the key change in the st1 is that both uh, data plane and uh, control planes are as uh, are uh, separated and uh, run in a different uh, uh, part of the different uh, network uh, architecture so if you see i have the two picture here uh, one is a traditional mbls network uh, where we have, we can see the end to end topology Uh, the, the below and the, the the top one is actually the 
HD1 topology where we have the edge as well as we have, we can see the centralized uh, uh, cloud where we have the control plane of uh, HD1 running. So these are the two uh, separate topologies. If you look at deep dive into each of them, um, the key difference is that the traditional uh, MPLS uh, network where both the control plane and data plane is reside in the router and the branch router. So it's actually relatively a, a smart, more uh, bigger devices with more intelligent. So it's you know, also, you know, it's required to bring up to the branch and install it in its, its more manual process. But um, uh, versus like uh, looking at the uh, SD1, which have the control plane sitting on the cloud and the data plane, the edge devices are uh, sitting on the branch where we have the minimum intelligent, but uh, mostly the data forwarding is a primary function. So that way, uh, there are two benefits out of it actually. One benefit is that uh, the cost of the edge device goes down and also it can be a hardware or a software solution. And other benefits are like there are topology wise, there is in the HD1 topology, you can see that there are multiple link going from the branch. One goes towards the internet directly and the other one towards the data center. Uh, the key benefits of that, the traffic for towards the internet and towards the SaaS service as well as the uh, cloud is a, uh, from the branch is uh, steered efficiently than the previous uh, 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 branch to all the traffic need to go to the uh, central location before going to the internet. So these are some of the key benefits of the ST1 when we move to the, the topology on the top. Uh, so hope you got uh, a good understanding of the uh, ST1 differences as well as uh, the different topo how the topologies are different. Let's dive into the cloud native ST1. Cloud native ST1 is a natural evolution of the standard ST1 uh, due to the explosion of cloud the adoption from you know, 2010 onwards. And also uh, a lot of uh, SaaS applications are evolved uh, over the period uh, of last uh, 15 years on the cloud. These two uh, aspect, you know, accelerated the ST1, um, cloud native ST1. So there are two aspects of the cloud native ST1. One aspect is that all the application in the, uh, in the running in the cloud need to be managed and differentiated based on their SLA, their SLA requirement. So it's, it's a policy is uh, extended for cloud native, cloud applications. As well as uh, the other aspect is that ST1 be, can be deployed in the cloud infrastructure so that uh, the, the flexibility of the cloud and the scalability of the cloud can be used for the ST1 deployment itself and also managing the different type of cloud topologies of uh, uh, hybrid, uh, uh, multi-cloud, single cloud, uh, uh, public cloud, all those different aspects of the topologies as well as um, the application in the cloud. Hope this, uh, uh, you understood uh, the cloud native ST1 and the different aspect of it. So let's uh, walk into this one particular flavor of the uh, cloud native ST1 called CN1. Uh, in this topology, what we are showing is how um, the CN1, uh, the ST1, in, the standard ST1 extended as CN1 to integrate and ex manage uh, the application like Kubernetes and also any, any, any cloud native application which is running in the cloud to make sure they can be the services can be in this specific case the cooperative services how we can be extended to uh, manage by the HTN topologies and uh, HTN uh, benefit. So in this case, I think we can see that you know there is a the the this can be also managed uh, by different uh, cloud topologies, low like hybrid cloud, public cloud, as well as the multi cloud topologies. Let's uh, talk about uh, uh, SASE. SASE is, ca is called Secure Access uh, so Research. It is a text evolution of the um, cloud uh, native ST1. So where uh, the, today the most uh, uh, difficult problem is uh, 
how we, you know, with the evolution of um, remote users as well as application running in premises and cloud and also SaaS application, uh, integrating the data flow along with the um, uh, security is one of the key challenge. Uh, so that's where I think the secure access to service edge come into play. So in so everybody today is actually following. So it's called zero trust security. No trust, you know. Trust everything is uh, uh, verified before uh, before uh, authorized and authenticated and continuously verified to ensure that the day the users and also the data and also devices are access the uh, the network as well as the data on the network securely so that's goal of the secure access to service search so this is extending the benefit of the st1 to the security so that security as well as uh, the network connectivity work together seamlessly to make sure that this uh, the, the making sure all the uh, traffics are as well as the access are controlled securely and managed securely uh, across the end to end Let's uh, look into the key difference between ST1 versus uh, SASE, right? So the, the first aspect is actually the uh, how the network itself is done, so to deploy. So it's actually in the ST1, it's create an overlay network using physical or, uh, or physical software or cloud-based application and available through manage or hybrid deployment, right? In case of SaaS, it's always going to be cloud-based and globally distributed through a, as a service uh, deployment. And the second aspect is uh, uh, that's how the security is integrated. So in the today's standard ST1, we require a third party to help in for the end-to-end -end, uh, security point of view. But for the SASE deployment, the security is built in, so there is no, it's integrated, so it's part of the solution itself. So in the current, uh, in the current topology, branch offices to network and follow the organization configure policy to determine how to route the traffic. Uh, but in the SASE case, uh, connect the endpoint to the edge and uh, traffic sent through globally distributed pops. So, and the, there is no backholding of the, the data to the data center. The other aspect is uh, the built-in remote access aspect of it actually. So the, there is no third party involved um, in, in, in case of uh, SASE where it is built-in. And uh, the third, the last one is actually the skill required. The, the standard ST1 only networking skill for deploying is the networking skill is required. But uh, for the SASE, it's an integrated both in security and networking skill is required for SASE application. So let's uh, conclude. Uh, let's go through the summary, right? what we learned so far. ST1 have evolved from one optimization to hybrid one to ST1 and finally to uh, SASE, right? So without the, uh, with the evolution of the ST1 evolved CN1. Uh, CN1 is where I think we have the cloud native one, uh, which extended for cloud native applications and services, as well as uh, cloud-based deployment. And uh, finally, the secure access service edge is emerged, the emerging architecture that combined ST1 and the security in a single platform. So these advancements have brought significant benefits to both uh, business, including improved application performance, reduced one cost, and enhanced security and integrated security. And also it supports the uh, evolving zero trust security, which is a new security model uh, for the cloud and uh, uh, for premises. Thanks for attending the session today. Hope this uh, helped you to enhance your knowledge on evolution of the ST1. Uh, if you need, uh, please subscribe the channel and uh, you to get such more uh, free training on this platform. Thank you.